What is up, Accelerate? Welcome back, Internet World. My name is Mike, he's Ian. Today, we bring you the Mercedes Benz SL63. In the 2023 Mercedes-Benz SL63 AMG. Comfort, sport, sport plus, race. Got it, race start, release, brake to start, and go. Woohoo, baby. <laughs> this is way quicker than I expected. 3.14. What? There's no way. I was not, there's no way. Race start. Come on. You got it, you got it, you got it. You got it. 3.0. 3.0. Three Come on! All my notes say this car does it in three and a half seconds. We got this, we got this. Okay, for the ground. Let's race start, race start. And go. Wow, it's quick. 3.09, man. Okay, okay, okay. Right temperature, right altitude. This thing is a two, is in the twos. That is wild. That is what, but it doesn't feel like that at all, at all. It's, it's so smooth and buttery. Hello, big body Benz. Now we've had this car for about a week and I will say it garners the most attention we've ever had on a car here at Accelerate. Very, very close to some other cars that are bright, colorful, and fast, but this is sleek, elegant, and beautiful. I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed this car over the last week, but there's something unique about it. So the unique thing is, is that we are here in July of 2023, but this SL is a 2022 model. It took a while to come to us here in Canada, but that's okay, because the last time we saw an SL was in 2020. It's been missing for two years, and they brought it back with a cleaner front end, cool wheels, an awesome back end, and well, coolest color I've ever seen. But let us know what you guys think between this color and the Stinger. Now speaking of the Stinger, we've already reviewed both of them. The Generation 1, the Generation 2, and now this third one is called the Tribute. Now it's not going to be on our main channel, it'll be on our secondary channel called Accelerate Plus. So if you haven't jumped on there, checked it out, and subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And if you're new to Accelerate in general, please do us a favor and help us to a million subs. With all your support and help, we would not be where we are, so we need all the love we can get, but we're not done there because we have this SL to talk about. This is the SL63. There's the SL43, the SL55, the SL63, and now the Fig Dog. Oh my God, I have to catch all that. The SL63E. That makes more power than this, which is crazy. E. Now under the hood of this SL63 is a V8. Now all SLs have V8s with the exception of the SL43. That has a two liter four banger that makes 375 horsepower. This hand built or what Mercedes Benz likes to do called one man, one engine when they develop their hand crafted motor. This makes 577 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. Now it's only available with a nine speed automatic transmission. To the front of the SL63. It's more this part. Look how long this hood is and how it flares downward. But it's not as like snubby type nose. It's cleaner. It's more aggressive. The styling is better in this model than the last generation for sure. Yes, it still has this AMG grille in the front. They're vertical stakes. Awesome. Big Mercedes-Benz obviously emblem. You have some piano black around these side vents that obviously suck air in. You obviously have a front camera, but it's just wider. It's lower. Now you might be asking, it sits pretty low. Well, this SL63 has ride lift. So the front actually lifts up when you're going over a bump like some supercars do. But the 
design is clean, it's sleek, it's sexy, but what's even sexier are these lights. It's called digital light, and it does this cool little lighting feature when you're parked in the dark or you're walking up to the vehicle, it like welcomes you. To the side of one of the most beautiful, whatever you wanna call this, because people are so mad that this is no longer a hard top. Yep, it's a soft top convertible, and I don't actually mind it because I got hated on for a very long time on driving an R8 Spider. People are like, ugh, soft top? Nasty. But think about it, all really high-end, luxurious convertibles or cabriolets are soft top, not hard top. I appreciate the fact that the hard top looks better when it's up, but majority of the time, you're gonna drive this thing with the top down. And if you can't or won't drive with the top down, then don't buy it, buy something else. Don't buy this, this is beautiful with the top down, and I appreciate seeing all this fancy stuff. Now there's also positive reasons for that. The weight is less, the weight is lower, and that's why it makes this a better than the last generation. So let's talk about some mechanical pieces of this SL63, starting off with these brakes. Come take a look at them. These brakes are 15.4 in diameter. They are six piston and they are yellow. But that doesn't mean anything. It means something when you hit the brakes and they break right away. And when you break right away, all that grip is transferred from these Pilot Sport 4S's to the ground. So you have two, let's say, I think it's two 75s, 35 21s in the front and 305 30 21s in the back. As far as suspension, it sits nice and low. This thing obviously does have Mercedes-Benz drive control. So you have all the features that will bore you to death, but I will tell you it handles like absolute gold. Look at it. Now we haven't had any luck lately in terms of getting views on our last couple of videos, but this is all about to change. Now I'm a believer in good luck and good luck means bird poop. Voila, well, this has been blessed. Now this SL63 is gonna kill it on YouTube. Anyways. To the side, check this out. You see this? This is a feature of money. It says V8 by turbo. Let's everybody know that pulls up next to you that you are a boss, 577 horsepower of goodness. Now this does have four Matic Plus. Even when you're driving it on the cluster, it has a picture of the vehicle and it tells you if it's in rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now as we move along, you have piano black beautiful mirrors, you have piano black on the bottom for side skirts, and then you have the most annoying door handles on the planet. Let me explain to you why. When I push them, they open up nice and pretty. When I walk up to them, they open up nice and pretty. But when I want to open it, it has this two phase thing. So look, did it fine. But it's designed for this. It's designed for a little touch and then it opens. But nobody does that. I'm trying to explain it's always easy. hard. There we go like boom and then comes out. It's just kind of irritating. It should be easier and I feel like they should fix this. And I can't be the only one complaining about this. See, it's like a delay. I just don't like it. Now moving back into the rear end, you can carry 18 and a half gallons of fuel in your Mercedes Benz. And in Canada, it costs about $130 to fill. Now as we move back here, I'm not a big fan of this rounded design, but this is probably the prettiest rounded back end. Like I absolutely hate the back end of the Cayman, but this is a cool, sleek design. And of course, when you put this spoiler up, which happens to have two different levels, it really changes the back end. It gives that more sporty appearance. And you can also see how this back bumper is flared and you can see this dual AMG exhaust from that position. To the back of the SL63. Look at this magnificent beauty. Obviously it looks similar to the old generation, but there's some changes. Do you guys notice how high it is? Even the car sits lower, the back end just sits a bit higher, which I do really like. From the back, it's beautiful. Obviously this color is magnificent. So let's start off at the top. You've got your third brake light hiding right there. You have your retractable spoiler that has two different levels. Of course you have the AMG letting everybody know how baller you are, including the SL63 on this side. You do have the Mercedes-Benz logo. You do have a trunk that is fully powered. Another the button to it is right here. So when I push this button, voila, it opens up. Of course, it's power, this is big money. And then you have a decent amount of storage room here. You can cannot fit a luggage, but a carry-on could fit, and definitely a couple duffel bags. Underneath here, you have a little bit more storage, but it's really designed for all your tire stuff. Now, when I close this thing, I can push this button, and voila, you close. 
Thank you, Mercedes-Benz SL63. As I move down, of course, you have Parktronics, you have these things. Now, these are designed as bumper guards. So when you get hit from the back, well, voila, you will not actually damage the bumper. These things are designed to be hit. Then you have some piano black on the bottom here, and of course, these magical AMG quad exhausts. Wow. This is the all new Mercedes-Benz SL63. This one is priced at 226,000 Canadian dollars. And everything about it is excellent. 70 years of excellence right here. You've got strips of leather everywhere. At the top of the door panel, the upper portion, the middle upper portion, the middle lower portion, and then the bottom of this door panel, all combined with white stitching. Then you have this Burmeister grill, which is all aluminum and it's sharp. Underneath you have ambient lighting. Now, if you've watched our videos before, Club AMG is a big staple here at Accelerate and this is no different. There's ambient lighting everywhere. And of course it changes color. Another design element I've noticed by sitting here is how skinny this dash is. It's very retro, especially how it meets the glove box. It's separated by, of course, ambient lighting. Anyways, the most important part here really is this screen. It's an 11.9 inch screen. And the cool part is that it angles, yep. It has a pitch angle from 12 to 32 degrees adjust by hitting this button. I hit the button, it says display angle and I can slide it all the way there. And voila, it pitches, I'll tell you why. Because of light, you don't wanna have glare, so they've actually made it for us convertible owners where you drive, voila, you can see it very well. It looks kind of weird when you look at it from the side. Most of the time you wanna probably have it in this angle on the bottom because it just looks more natural because everybody's gonna complain how it looks like an iPad, but iPads obviously do have a glare when sun hits it in convertibles. So they've made this display angle. You can. So here's a couple complaints I have about the SL. The first one's not really a complaint. It's more so like a design piece that I would have probably just added and not just left it the way it is. Right behind the screen here, you have two cutouts in this dash and it appears to have some sort of storage compartment behind it, but it's not. I try to pull it and push it and nothing's really happening. It's just more of an access panel, I guess, but it looks like there would be something there. The second thing is this sort of center console and it's plastic. It should be something different. It's not like it hides dirt or doesn't get scratched. It's kind of scratched up and yeah, just really cheap looking for something that's expensive. And then you have piano black, which I guess it looks fancy when it's super clean, but it just gets really dirty, especially when they know your hand's gonna be here because they gave me this, this little pad. And then this pad is not even soft, it's hard. Like, look, it's hard, it should be soft. This is a Mercedes Benz. It's an SL63, 70 years of tradition. Michael Richard Pence is an American politician who served as the 48th Vice President of the United States from 2017 to 2021. Okay, thanks for that. Anyways, that was cool. But really, this should be better quality in my opinion. Now anyways, let's move this piano black panel back and that exposes two cup holders, as well as your wireless charging and two USB-Cs. When I push this back and I move further down from there, this is more traditional Mercedes-Benz. I push this down and it exposes the center console where I have two more USB-Cs and a decent amount of storage and that's illuminated. So in front of me, I have a heads-up display along with a 12.3 inch driver's display that is beautiful, crystal clear, and gives me everything I wanna see. Love it, very clear, very clean. It even has this little display of a vehicle showing me that I'm in rear wheel drive because for the first time ever, I have an all wheel drive setup in an SL, sick. Now on this AMG steering wheel, I have leather on the bottom and leather on the top, along with Alcantara down the sides. The only weird part or interesting part about this steering wheel compared to the GT63 we reviewed is that it does not have the center 12 o'clock marking. This one's just plain. It does have everything else though. It has your four little individual quadrants that have on the left side, your adjustments where you can adjust the driver's screen and the right side where you can adjust the center screen. Below that, I have my cruise control. And then on the right side, I have my volume controls and of course my controls for my telephone. Now take a look at the adjustments you can do just on the steering wheel. This is where I can adjust my ESP, my suspension, my exhaust system, my transmission, my start and stop, my rear spoiler and my AMG dynamics all by hitting the up and down on this little button. And then you can adjust it even further by having it moderate, reduced, more advanced, just different modes. 
Now the driver's displays and all the different adjustments you can do and fonts are just wild. I don't know how anybody would pick. They'd pick it the first time at the dealership when they buy this thing and then never change it again. But look at what you can do. This is the displays. Classic, understated, which I've seen in different Benzes, but this is cool. Sport, super sport, and track pace. So let's check out track pace. Check this out. How awesome is this? This is what super sport looks like. It looks like track, except it's wider and it looks like I'm flying through a tunnel. Then up next is sport, which I've seen before in a few Benzes. People will probably just use classic because it's the most natural looking and will give you the most information. Now we have filmed lots of Benzes, especially their infotainment. So if you haven't watched one of our videos before, please go ahead and do so. So I'll give you a quick rundown of what it does. So on the bottom here, you have a fixed little panel. And this is where your drive modes are selected. That is where your 360 camera happens. This is new because we've never had a convertible on the channel before from Benz. When you hit this button, you'll have this display and that'll show you how to open and close your soft top. And it's not done by hitting a button. It's actually done by a finger. So here's, I hit this button and then voila, I have to hold it there or hold it the other direction for it to open and close. Sometimes it doesn't always work. It's not always on. Like I can do that, but then nothing happens. I have to actually put it in drive and put it back into park and then it seems to work. Kind of a weird system, but hey, it is what it is. Then next to it, I have a front image of the Mercedes-Benz SL63. I hit it and that will give me more independent things to adjust. Next up, you have your four ways and then your biometric access so the vehicle knows who the driver is. That's how you shut the system off. And then this button again is to adjust the angle of the screen. Now, it's a pretty cool system, but I will say going up makes a lot of noise. Listen. I feel like they should make that a little bit more muffled. And then next to that is for the passenger to adjust the volume. We as the driver or me as the driver can adjust it just by the steering wheel, but the passenger will have to do it on this little slidey over here. Moving up from there is the fixed portion of the display panel, which covers about one third of the screen. That is where you can adjust your fan speed and your dual climate control, as well as your home button to go back and then back and forward on a track. Moving up from there is where you have your typical Benz MBUX infotainment software, where you have your navigation, your comfort, your radio, media, a store, phone, app settings, and the most important part in this SL63 is performance. So let's take a quick look into that. On the top, you have vehicle, engine, and consumption. So if we start off with vehicle, it shows you your damping suspension, it shows you different accelerations and braking, along with whatever drive mode you're in. Then you have engine, where it shows you your engine torque, your power, and then of course, how much boost the V8 is getting. Now, how much room do we have in the back of this SL63? Well, it's really designed for dogs or for storage or for bags because an adult back here is pretty tight, like very tight. Nobody's going far with this thing. Also, I'd be scared that I would lose my head in a rollover. But as you know, convertibles, the old SL used to have this big old wing on the back to protect us. But nowadays we have these little blow up thingies and they basically pop up from the back here and they're basically rollover bars. So if it does flip over, these things will pop up and save the top of my head. So let's get into comfort here because we've got some real business to talk about. The confusion about what this car actually is. People say that Mercedes-Benz is confused on what this car is. There's a lot of AMG pieces here, but they've softened it up. They're giving the soft top. It's just not what people want is what people are saying, but I disagree. I think this car is pretty much perfect. It gives you all the comfort you want in comfort. It's smooth, it's quiet. This motor just nothing. pushes like nothing. This push is just push this motor. Can you say that again? Please? Cancel, 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 cancel. I'm in the middle of a really important conversation talking about how confused people think that this AMG is, but it's not. It's amazing. It is smooth. This motor pulls like a freight train. The inside is luxurious. But when you put it in Sport Plus or Race, it definitely tightens up. It's not crazy, AMG. But I can't help you with that right now. No worries. Don't worry, girl. I got you. I got you. So let me tell you, this is a great car. It pulls like a train. It's smooth. It looks amazing. The attention that this car is getting with this color is awesome. Because people are like, well, it's not black. It's not white. It's not silver. It's this cool gray. And I love it. I love it. I love everything about this car. Just 
really cheap looking for something this expensive. Look, look guys, we had this BMW M40, M340, and the inside sound is completely different than the outside sound with the exhaust. It burbles and crackles when you're on the inside. On the outside though, it makes none of that sounds. But this thing, obviously, way different class, way different money, but this is real. It's magic. Magic to my ears. They're making one with more power. 700 and something horsepower. Does anybody need that? Hell no. Nobody needs 700 horsepower in this car. This thing at 577 is plenty. And if you feel like you can tune it, there are manufacturers out there that will tune it or aftermarket products that will tune it. You can get it faster, but at like three seconds flat, how much power do people need? I think it's crazy. The thing about it for me is like this new SL43. They're really trying it out. They're really like opening up the bottom. Mercedes has been doing that for years and years and years. They've been opening up the bottom in terms of buyers. They're trying to use this kind of clout and be like, hey, you can feel that way if you buy this AMG line or something. It's just annoying. But hey, not everybody's got the dough. I mean, I don't. Do you? And then there's the first time in history having 4Matic Plus or an all-wheel drive on an SL. It's been around for 70 years, and this is the first time ever. And the cool part is, you get to see it on the screen. That's sick. So look, they're just adding that stability, that safety, all that fun stuff in an SL package. It's a lot of money, but man, everything's a lot of money today. I can't afford it. so. I guess I can just drive it and enjoy it for the love and hope you guys come along with this beautiful ride because I've been driving this thing as much as I can outdoor. We've had beautiful weather all week. I'm in love with this thing. You got me at the end of a car review or a car week review. So let's talk about the suspension a little bit more in depth because this thing is just amazing around corners. It just makes you feel completely planted. It's just weighted perfectly. So it's got this thing called AMG Active Ride Control. And the new thing now is that the anti-roll stabilization is hydraulic. It is not mechanical. So forget all that lingo. All it means is that the torsion bar stiffness is like tighter. Just by clicking a little few knobs, it makes a difference. It goes from like great stiffness to super softness. And it's, oh, I just cannot, cannot say how great this is. The active dampers are interlinked with a system that works magically. That's why I'm in love. I'm in a very good mood today. Weather's perfect. The car rides absolutely magical. It's not rattly whatsoever, but it can go from like ultra luxury to like almost a track star, almost a track star, but good enough to just have fun with it on the weekend. The other confusion people are asking is why not a six banger? Why a four banger and then this monster? Like there's nothing in the middle. And that kind of makes sense. The sixes just kind of play this whole like, we'll just buy the six because the four is garbage. But we're walking into an era of fuel stinginess. And that's what they're doing it for. You get all this stuff, obviously minus, you know, the sound and the acceleration and all that stuff with the SL43. But I just hope I haven't seen one or driven one, but I hope that the 43 is actually decent. I actually do. And I hope they give you some AMG stuff with it and I hope that it looks cool and fancy. And then people will say, well, then this is too expensive. So it's one of those things that you can't please everybody. There'll be hate all around, but I do really appreciate the fact they don't have the six. I like the fact that they have a four, you know, just, you know, from a marketing perspective. And I do obviously appreciate they have this because I got this to listen to. Give me a corner, give me a corner. I'm gonna end this review with a beautiful corner. Come on, 4,000 pounds of power. Whoa, whew, oh my God. Those 305s really stick, baby. What the, oh my God. I was like, there's no way this thing's gonna grip. Yes, grip, grip, grip. Woo, baby. Oh my God, way too fast. Doesn't feel like it. I love you, Mercedes-Benz SL63 AMG. If I could only afford you, I would buy one. And if you can afford it, buy one. If you like this review on this magical AMG. Thank you Mercedes-Benz Canada for giving me one. 
We'll catch you on the next one.